So I've never made a video quite like this before. Um, I've Well, first of all, I've never held a shotgun microphone up against my face like this, but I saw somebody on YouTube do it, so I'm gonna do it too. Uh, I've also never done like a ranting video before, and this is kind of a ranting video about photography in general, um, but I'm going to try to keep this somewhat linear, so I've got a list of things. Uh, here are five things that I personally find extremely annoying about photography. Did I just say photography? I think I might have said photography instead of photography. Okay, we're gonna make this six things. Now, as I'm going through this list, I wanna point something out. Uh, I am by no means a photo god, like Joe Greer, or Io Greer, or however he pronounces his name, or Will Willem Verbeek, all right? I am not a photo master, like the YouTube legends. Therefore, I am guilty of some of these things, and I will air out my dirty laundry by showing you the things on this list that I have done, maybe talking about it, or maybe even showing photos I've taken, uh, like number one on the list, which is vintage cars. People take too many damn photos of vintage cars, myself included. And I feel like the majority of people that take photos of vintage cars don't know anything about cars, myself included, and just post them online because people see a vintage car in a photo and they double tap immediately because it's a vintage car. So they're getting more traction on those photos. Myself is included in this as well, like I mentioned before. Uh, maybe we need to focus more on our composition uh, rather than just the fact that there's a vintage car in a photo. So here are some photos I've taken of some vintage cars. Not all of them were terrible. Some of them were composed okay. Some of them were kind of boring. If you took out the vintage car and replaced it with literally anything else, it would be not a good photo. I guess if you take the main subject out of any photo, it won't work without the main subject there. But I mean, what I'm saying is if you replace that photo with something else, the photo is now not really interesting. And you know, I, I just feel like it's there's no substance to it. So here are some photos that I have taken that have even less substance than the photos I've already showed you. So there's some of my dirty laundry right up, right off the bat. There's some things that I've done on this list that are that are I find annoying, and I'm trying not to do it anymore because I find it annoying. So moving on to number two, which if I had tiered these in the list as like number one is the worst and number five is is not as bad, number two would be at the top. I find this one to be the most annoying thing in photography. I would classify this type of photography as garbage, trash, junk photos. So uh, number two on the list is. People who take photos of nothing but pretty young females who are scandally clad and assume that because they get traction on these photos based on the fact that there's boobs and butts inside the photos that they're a fantastic art photographer. So this is kind of a double-edged sword. There are people that make money off of taking photos of scandally clad women for a, a variety of different purposes. You know, there's boudoir photographers, there are photographers that uh, just do more like artistic photos and some women like to do that. There are models that want to get into that type of modeling and photographers provide a service for them. There are also fine art photographers like Tyler Shields who takes photos that might be more risque but they have a meaning behind it. So I'm not saying anybody that takes a photo of a naked woman is on this list but I mean come on you know who you are. You guys who don't really know anything about photography that join these like model groups and photography groups in your area and just like find out the newest models that don't know anything about what they're doing because you want to take naked photos of them and post it on the internet because when you take naked photos of a woman, it's going to get more attraction regardless of how crappy your photo is. I mean, you know who you are. Come on. You got, you got to stop that. I mean, you got to understand that like people are looking at your photos because there's boobs in your photos, like not because your photos are good. That doesn't mean every photo with boobs in it is a bad photo, but your photos specifically are trash. You just come off like a creepy guy that just, just wants to see women get naked in front of you. So that's that's pretty high up on this list. The rest of the things on this list won't be so dark. So we're, we're gonna move on to something a little bit less dark, which is number three, uh, photography fads. I'm like encompassing everything into this. I mean, the white borders on every photo you post on Instagram, the uh, Lightroom preset that everybody uses for every engagement shoot, everything from like taking a photo of a rose and, and converting it to black and white to um, trying to edit your photos to make it look like film. 
There are people that do this really well. I actually follow quite a few people on Instagram that have like a specific style that they have curated out of another style. So it's almost like a fad, but they've kind of made it a little bit better and made it their own style. I'm not calling people out like that. I'm not talking about people who make a living taking photos of people in a specific way that have a set style so that people come to their page knowing what style they do because they want that style. That's not the people I'm talking about. The people I'm talking about are people that specifically go after a photography fads to become more popular and more known in photography because if they do the same thing as everybody else that's getting the hits, then they'll get more hits. I've been guilty of this before. Like I've tried to curate my Instagram page layout thing to to gain more people. That being said, it was because I was making money off of it. But I think if you get sucked into this whole like take a photo of a rose and turn it black and white or, you know, turn everything teal and, and pink like that one photography fad for a while that I didn't fall into so I don't have a reference photo of, but you guys know what I'm talking about. If you fall into this fad of like editing your photos the same way as everybody else, taking photos of the same thing as everybody else does, I, I don't feel like you're gonna get any better. It, it definitely did not help me to get any better. I, I just started taking photos like everybody else. I mean, I don't know, art is subjective, so maybe them doing it over and over again is is their way of expressing themselves and who am I to judge? I'm definitely not a photography god like Willem Verbeek or I.O. Greer, if that's what you're wondering. So guess I can't judge him. Moving on to number four, the term making a photo, not taking a photo, making a photo. Now, this is something that just irks me personally. And I feel bad because I've just like called out to uh, YouTube photographers. I don't want to call them YouTube photographers. They're YouTubers who are photographers as well. So I'm not trying to trash anybody at all. Uh, and these two people do it as well as like every other famous or or up and coming photographer on YouTube. I hear people saying that all the time online, making a photo. And it comes off to me like so pretentious and so like inhale the smell of your own farts. I understand the sentiment of saying making a photo. Um, I understand where it came from. I get the sentiment behind it, but I don't know, sometimes the way people say it and sometimes when they say it so nonchalantly, when they talk about taking photos, every time they say taking photos, they say making a photo. Yesterday I was making some photos with a friend. When you're making photos, I made some photos the other day. Well, I'm gonna go out with my Leica M6 and make some photos. I don't know, it just comes off so pretentious. It makes it seem like you feel like what you're doing is so much more important than it is or so much more amazing than it is. But then again, I, I'm a hypocrite because like, who am I to say that it's not important? Who am I to say that it's not great? I guess on one hand, it's annoying to hear. On the other hand, if you don't let it be known that photography is important, I don't know. It's it's hard to argue the worth of art um, while not simultaneously being annoyed about people who think it's worth more than it is, I guess, for me personally. If you say make a photo instead of take a photo every time you talk about photography, eh, I mean, you're not gonna go to hell, but you do have to burn your light on a fire and pay penance for your crimes, or you might, so keep that in mind. And number five, um, the last on the list, photography snobs. And I'm going to lump photography like purist snobs and camera gear snobs in the same category because they are both equally as irritating to me. Now, there are people that are kind of, you know, fanboys of certain camera brands like Nikon, Canon, Sony, Leica, uh, who maybe think that their brand is the best brand. I'm not gonna say Leica is the, is the one that does it the most, but Leica definitely has the most Leica fans that think that Leica is literally the best camera ever and Leica, you know, Leica. In, in today's world, in 2021, if you can go to a thrift store, find a five, $10 point and shoot 35 millimeter film camera, put a cheap roll of like $4 film in there and take a cool photo, like, I don't know, like maybe the, $10,000 camera setup is not necessary for everybody. I'm not saying it's not necessary for some people. I'm shooting on an expensive setup right now. It's not a cheap setup that I'm shooting on, but I don't think it's 100% necessary to get a good photo. And I think that there are not a whole lot of camera snobs out there anymore, but you know, there are some. Moving on to photo purist snobs. Now, I feel like this is a much more predominant group of people in like the photography snob subgroup, but um, people that basically 
would say something like, oh, if it's not shot on a 35 millimeter film camera in black and white at F16 or F8, depending on the lighting conditions, then it's not a real street photo. Technically, this is not fine art photography because nah, 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 nah. I don't know, people that put a bunch of rules onto photography when, yes, there should be some guidelines, but I mean, there are a lot of people that like stick to these rules really, really strictly. But what I found is the people that are really like adamantly snobby about types of photography and the do's and don'ts of photography are usually not that good good at, at photography. So um, I, I was scratching my head and said that very awkwardly, but I, I don't know. Maybe that says something about myself. Uh, that is the end of my rant. Uh, that's the end of my photography rant uh, today. So those are the five things, I guess six, because I talked about the word photography that annoy me in photography. I'm just, I'm just annoyed right now about it. I still love it. I'm still going to keep doing it. In fact, I took like five photos today. So you know, it is what it is. <laughs> Thanks for listening to my rant. Maybe I'll have a better um, outlined one, one that has more of structure to it next time, but hope you enjoyed it. Make sure that you don't go out and make any photos on a Leica of naked women being portraits specific. So, okay, thanks. Have a good day, everybody. Yeah.